Welcome back to the Comic College. My name is Ryan, and today I'm going to be talking about the Doctor Fate miniseries from 1987. J.M.D. Matisse, Keith Giffen, and Dave Hunt. So, I've had this. I've had this series for a little while. Was was at a period where I was, I was really like digging some of the 80s DC stuff, and you know, like I just finished the Justice League for like the umpteenth time so I was like trying to soak up anything I could get and I had never heard of this series and obviously like Dimitrius and Giffen co-wrote the Justice League series like from the 80s that was just absolutely um, hilarious such a great run so when I saw this I'm like okay I gotta I gotta pick it up didn't know anything about the story just knew it was Dr. Fate book and I I love these like B-list you know characters that don't necessarily get much shine 80s was definitely a time where we saw more of this. I would say the 90s, or even early 2000s still, we'd get like series based on like the, not the, you know, the Trinity or even the main Justice League characters. I had no idea what to expect. Amazing book. Uh, just quick, you know, recap just to kind of like give you uh, the bare bones of what this series is. And then I'll kind of flip through some of the issues to kind of show them off. So, you know, we start off and Kent Nelson's dying. Basically, he's Naboo's host, right? And this is still when we're, like, reconfiguring the DCU post-Crisis on Infinite Earths, merging all the Earths. He had been in the Justice League, but I think at issue 7, I believe, is when he leaves and he, he's not a part of the team anymore. But, like, it, you know, this this also deals a lot with him not having as much power and you're going to see that when I flip through some of the pages Naboo takes control of this of you know when the helmet is on it's we also see that he's a lord of order and then we're going to see the opposing forces of him going against the lords of chaos it talks about the yuga cycles and oh, I didn't really know what that was so I looked it up but that has a lot to do with Hinduism so there's a lot of like really high concept in here um, just absolutely phenomenal. The art, writing, everything about this is just so good. And also in here, we're going to see, because Kent Nelson's dying, Naboo needs to find a new host. And it ends up being a 10-year-old boy uh, named Eric Strauss. And you're going to see what happens because of that. It's so good. And I, I can't wait to flip through the pages. Just wanted to give a quick you know, overview of what to expect as we flip through it, because as I always do, I don't necessarily go page by page, especially when I'm doing multiple issues. Just wanted to give a little spotlight on this. Also, I originally had chosen to do this because it kind of falls in line a little bit with like, you know, horror themed because, you know, as you can see on the covers, he's fighting demons, Lords of Chaos. In between the time that I set this aside, which um, was... As of the time I'm recording, this is pre-New York City Comic Con. We lost Keith Giffen, and he has been one of my favorite creators for a long time. A lot of his comic books have had a huge impact on me. Rest in peace uh, to Mr. Giffen. And so I, I knew I had to get this on. I, we There is going to be some plans to do a whole week dedicated to Keith Giffen, which will be coming up soon. But this was already on the list for you know the month of October, so I thought I'd jump ahead, do this real quick, and then we'll come back and check out more of the works of Mr. Keith Giffen. So just to jump right in, you know, Dematias is the writer, Keith Giffen's the illustrator. So, you know, I come at him, you know, Giffen's work mostly as a fan of his writing. His art is something that I have become a fan of after the fact. Like, it was his writing that pulled me in, and then I found out he also drew, I mean, he, like, so many good stories. I won't, I'm not gonna give away all the books that we're gonna cover on here, but it's a mix of his, his writing and his art. So I love this, you know, off top, we get, you know, Dr. Fate uh, fighting these, like, weird demon creatures, and as I said, like, there's the conflict in, inside in the inner dialogue of Naboo and Kent Nelson at odds with one another. And just some great layouts. I love the way he draws the cape here, like, almost as if it has a life of its own. I, I'm, I like. And then here, like we see the etherealness of, you know, the consciousness of Naboo, and how he's not really like, he doesn't have a physical form, so he's just like this weird, like, floating essence almost. We're getting a little bit of backstory, like I said, with the, you know, the 
the different ages of man, the yugas and stuff. And again, I didn't know when I was reading it, but I had to look it up about, you know, what is that? And is that made up for the book? Is it real? And it is. It's with Hinduism. And you see, like, them ask, you know, he's being asked by the Lords of Order, "Are you, have you accepted death? And you can see that he's dying, right? And then we flash forward to this woman named Linda. She's walking with this little boy. And, you know, spoiler alert, I mean, this book has been out since it's as old as me, which is 36 years ago. But this is Eric, and he is the kid that is 10 years old at the the moment, but he is going to be the new Dr. Fate. And we get a little bit of backstory on Linda, you know, and how she came to be this boy's, his surrogate mom. So she's not his blood mom, but she's his surrogate mom, and she's in love with him which is weird and she mentions how he has an old soul again hinduism reincarnation you know all that kind of stuff is very prevalent in here and we get to we meet dr stoner he's a doctor at arkham asylum and it, like all these like demons that he's like interacting with and you see that he's not what he seems to be he's not a force for good he's working for the lords of chaos get a little joker in here and I love these close-ups he does. He does a lot of this with, like, the mouth on on different characters. But this isn't what you would think as you look over here. And it's Naboo speaking through the body of Kent Nelson. It's so creepy looking. You know, here's Eric. And he's talking about, you know, how he's going to be the, the new heir to the mantle of Dr. Fate. And he gets aged up. And this, by the way, this was also, um, you know, the this was like the deluxe. DC books that were coming out at the time. So you see, like, in, in this checklist, you know, Vigilante, Electric Warrior, Legion of Superheroes, Watchmen was still going on at this time, Infinity New Teen Times. So these were a little bit more uh, printed on a little bit better paper, a little bit heavier stock. And some these are, like, the more, I think, I don't want to say necessarily mature reader stuff, but a little bit more thought-provoking in terms of some of the content. This mouth also really reminded me of, like, a light-filled mouth. So I have to think that... Um, he was definitely Giffen is definitely one of his influences artistically, but the writing is so good in here. You're getting the the contrast of like this woman Linda and her relationship with Eric, who's going to become the new mantle of Doc, you know going to become the new Doctor Fade, and you see Kent is dying. He's conflicted with Naboo. It's demon creatures by Giffen are great. I, I, again, a lot of like close up shots with the eyes, the mouths. And Eric, you know, battling this demon, like, he's not ready. He's not prepared for what's going to come over. And Naboo refuses to help him. So he doesn't take over and doesn't teach him what he needs to do in order to defeat these demons. And now he's all messed up, right? Like, he just wants to go home and he just keeps repeating it over and over and over. And then here comes this evil doctor. I'll take care of you. And takes him, you know, to Arkham Asylum. Some great ads, this Shadow series by Bill Sienkiewicz, Andrew Helfer, uh, you know, the who's who, bunch of other cool stuff. I always love seeing these ads, so I have to show them off at least once in a video. Uh, one of my favorite all-time series, Green Arrow Longbow Hunters. There's an episode on the channel with this, so definitely check that out. You know, as, as we go through, like, we see a little bit more of Kent Nelson and how he came to be and how, you know, he went with his father to the tombs in Egypt and how he was possessed by Naboo at a young at a young age as well about his wife Inza who's who's no longer here and I love this line too you dwell too long on death Kent Nelson when life still has its demands death will come for you soon enough I assure you so reluctantly is like taking on this like this kid and it's trying to help him and Dr. Stoner like He's going to end up taking the mantle. I love these, like, little images of, like, you know, Joker and Two-Face in the asylum performing this weird ritual. I'll, again, these demons are super creepy looking. I love how they, like, have this almost like a smoky vibe to them, but also a physical aspect. It's a great a full page of Dr. Fate. Such an awesome book, both story-wise. I love seeing Keith Giffen's pencils, too, because, like, he's got... He does so many different styles throughout his career like there's you know the stuff he did with like on that omac book uh, for new 52 that has huge kirby vibes to it um again i love this stuff when the lords of order are talking to naboo and you know again throughout this naboo even is going to be changed a little bit as he has spent so much time with humanity 
it's had an effect on him, right? And Doctor Stoner has the power of Doctor Fate now, and he's going to use the he's going to use the powers for evil and perversion again. Look, got a thing like this, almost like a Venom look to it. It's just it's interesting to see, man, because this predates Venom too. So, uh, and like I mentioned earlier, like. This is during the era of the Justice League by Dematias and Giffen. So we're going to get the teams here a little bit. We get Guy Gardner, Mr. Miracle, Martian Manhunter, Batman even is called, Phantom Stranger. Love when we get to see these characters. I'm telling you, it's just some of my favorite characters are the characters that don't get the shine. And such a rich history from DC that I would just love to see some of these characters get more of a spotlight in the current line of books, like we just we don't see them even like they're relegated to background characters, if at all. Throw a miniseries in there once in a while. This is a four issue miniseries. Let's get that going again. Three issue miniseries, like that Doctor Midnight book that I talked about recently with Matt Wagner and John K. Snyder. Like, there's just so many ways to kind of showcase these characters, give their fan base, like myself, and I'm, I know I'm not the only one. Just the pain in Kent Nelson being manipulated he can't you know like he's he's just crying out and he just he has been manipulated for so long by Naboo that he's just at his wit's end and again look at this Liefeld right here this looks like Liefeld and you know I love seeing the way Dr. Fate's powers mixed with this like Lords of Chaos and the Demons and Typhon are just completely like perverted we see and then we see Batman and Guy Gardner just blasted away insane dude and so they think that he's they're dead but they're not they've just gone somewhere else this is the extent of of us seeing the justice league and phantom stranger fighting and then we learn that like eric and linda need to be together as one to be the new wielder of the amulet of dr fate and the helm of dr fate which is interesting because it's not the only time I think that there's been two people to to bear the mantle of Doctor Fate together. I can't remember the other names. I think Kent Nelson was with his wife as Doctor Fate at one point, maybe, or it's a different character. But you know they're going to defeat Doctor Stoner. Eric and Linda will accept their fate, no pun intended, to become the new Doctor Fate. Kent Nelson will finally be put to rest, or so it seems. We get to see Naboo kind of tell the Lords of Order to go, you know, F themselves. And he doesn't want to ascend and, and stay with them. And he goes back to Earth. And where does he go? To the gravestone of Kent Nelson. And he has now taken over the body of Kent Nelson. And doesn't even want to be referred to as Naboo, but he wants to be referred to as Kent. And he's now going to train the new Doctor Fate to, you know, protect the world from the Lords of Chaos. So this is... One of my one of the best stories I would say from this era that I've read. I loved it. I I mean the art, the writing, everything about it is fantastic. I highly recommend it, especially if you are like myself and you like some of the B list characters. You liked the Justice League series from the eighties, post crisis on different Earths. This is right up your alley. Go check it out. You can be sure that there's going to be a lot more eighties DC stuff to come. A lot more Keith Giffen as well. So. Be on the lookout for that. Make sure you check out some of the other vids on the channel. There's a video on the Justice League from the 80s. There's a video on the Green Arrow Longbow Hunters, like I said. Make sure you like, follow, subscribe. Hit the bell icon so you're notified every time a new vid drops. And on that note, I'm out.